that uh, on my picket signs, which, you know, I guess can be as glaring as the uh, sun in some ways. This looks like a familiar face, or perhaps not. <clears throat> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Well, the best to you. Yes, thank you very much, sir. You too. <clears throat> So it was not a Montreal Unitarian. He looked similar to a guy uh, who is a Montreal Unitarian, but uh, clearly not that person. And wished me a happy new year. It was kind of nice. I almost uh, responded, it's always a happy uh, new year when I'm standing accused of blasphemy by atheist Unitarians. But uh, since he wasn't in on the joke, I didn't uh, bother. <laughs> but when... Uh, Unitarian Universalists says something like Happy New Year or, you know, have a good day or whatever. That's usually uh, how I respond, you know, just to remind them uh, what a pleasure it is to be accused of uh, blasphemous libel by atheist Unitarians in the 21st century. It really is a unique honor and privilege. <laughs> it's a shame it never got to court. I would have loved to defend myself in court against this bullshit, but of course, uh, when I challenged uh, the lawyer's uh, accusations in my emails to him and top-level UUA leaders, uh, you know, they realized that, you know, they couldn't possibly win in any court case accusing me of blasphemous libel. The, the premise for accusing me of blasphemous libel was false. My uh, allegations about Unitarian Universalist uh, ministers engaging in such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape are by no means unfounded and vicious, as uh, the UUA's lawyer tried to pretend in his demand letter. But on top of that, the most interesting thing is that even if I actually was making false accusations about Unitarian Universalist ministers, engaging in such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape, well, that might constitute ordinary civil libel, uh, but it would not constitute the criminal act of blasphemous libel, because blasphemous libel is blaspheming against the religion. And uh, essentially what that means is you have to be attacking, you know, what is held to be sacred by the religion, uh, what is held to be holy, and, and so on. Uh, if you're not doing that, well, it's not blasphemous. Um, and so the only circumstance under which I could actually be guilty of blasphemous libel for criticizing uh, pedophilia and rape committed by Unitarian Universalists is if Unitarian Universalists had held pedophilia and rape to be sacred. And uh, last time I checked, uh, that wasn't the case yet. They might get around to it eventually, I suppose, but, uh, but to the best of my knowledge, unless there's some secret doctrine of uh, Unitarian Universalism that I'm unaware of, uh, they do not at this uh, point in time hold uh, such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape to be uh, sacred <coughs> or holy. Uh, So we have a few people uh, showing up here. Maybe half a dozen or so, so far. Maybe a little over half a dozen have gone in since I arrived. And uh, we'll continue to uh, circulate here. Now, uh, since the beginning of the church year in September, the uh, leadership of the church has taken to uh, having a little procession into the church uh, just prior to the service starting. They sing a song or something and have a little procession into the church. So I don't know if they're going to do that today, but it's possible that a certain number of uh, 
church leaders will come out of the church and then uh, re-enter it singing a song. We'll see if that happens today. Or they might have decided to uh, abandon that uh, little ritual. Um, let's just get this picket sign put back up again. I'm just going to have a look at the camera. Yep, still running. Got uh, about seven minutes of video left in uh, this segment. So we'll just uh, continue uh, for another few minutes and then we'll start up another uh, segment of video. Um, I pretty well have to record everything that happens as a result of uh, numerous false complaints called into the police by Montreal Unitarians, basically falsely accusing me of things like uh, assaulting members or, uh, or blocking circulation and this and that. Uh, uh, there's been uh, some pretty serious false accusations made against me, so, so I keep the camera running almost constantly to show what really happened to protect myself from any uh, false accusations. And um, so I. Um, ready? So. <laughs> Let's see what's going on here. Okay, that's interesting. Well, the guy saw my sign and seemed to be taking evasive action, but uh, it's uh, not a Unitarian from what I can tell, unless it's someone who's decided to go in the back entrance, but uh, anyhow, there are, you know, certain people who get nervous about protesters in general, um, certain insecure people basically, could be a case of that, but uh, oh, got a taxi showing up here, <coughs> so... Yeah, it's somewhat harder for the taxis to let people off now that there's a bike lane here and has been for the uh, better part of a year now, if not longer. Um, Alrighty, oh, there goes the sign. Just uh, put the picket sign back up again. Uh, so. As I said, we got a few minutes of video left. We'll just uh, see what the situation is. Oh yeah, I got about uh, four or five minutes of recording time left on this segment. So we'll let it more or less run out and then we'll uh, start a fresh uh, segment of video. <clears throat> Hmm, taking the difficult route rather than the easy one. Seems to be a habit amongst the Unitarians. Fifteen feet back to the corner, and you don't have to step up. So, let's just uh, see what we're doing in terms of time here. Oh, we got a two or three minutes of recording left. So. <clears throat> It's Harvey Shepard, former Gazette religion columnist, showing up 
in the taxi. <clears throat> So, I think we shall just, uh, we've only got about one minute left, so I think I'm going to uh, st stop the video now and restart. <laughs>